to the 2019 Mr. Olympia weekend. It's an honor to be here as the honorary ambassador for this year's contest. I spent a lot of years batting on these stages. Four victories. We won't talk about the second places. I was reminiscing before this event saying 20 years ago, I landed in Las Vegas to get up on the Olympia stage for the first time with a dream to become the best bodybuilder in the world. Now, transitioning to many new divisions, a lot of these athletes today you'll see up here, hand select to be part of this Olympia press conference would be vying for the best title in the world in their category. So we want to experience the best time between the expo and the shows. We appreciate all the support that the fans have come from all over the world, traveling from many far places, the competitors. Let's just have an awesome weekend. Let's, let's experience something like we never had before. I'm excited for the weekend. I'm sure you guys are too. So without further ado, let's bring them on.
got just a little bit bigger. The back row is going to be fine. A little bit, a little bit. So, Sean, your birthday this week, I'm told. So uh, that means we are the same age, of course, uh, although you're technically older than me. We're actually the same age as the Olympia. So this is what, the 54th Olympia? Absolutely. Larry Scott won the very first one back in 1965 in Brooklyn, New York. Absolutely. Well, we've come a long way since 1965. What the people are going to see this weekend is a whole lot of changes here at the Olympia, folks. We have revamped, remade, and made it a little bit bigger like that Sandow Trophy, Sean. A little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little bit better. So this weekend, you people are in for a real treat. This isn't the only thing they got there, Bob. And you know a little bit about what's been happening with this weekend. Lots of changes have been taking place. This entire weekend is bigger. Especially the prize money. Well, we're going to get to the prize money in just a minute because all the athletes want more money, of course. But we've got a lot of changes, and those changes are a direct result of our good friend Dan Solomon, who is in charge of the Olympia this year. Dan? Big hand for Dan Solomon, folks, your chief Olympia officer. And our show producer, Mr. Tamer El Gindi, is in the house. So, Tamer, I know he's in the back working those controls. Big hand for Tamer, everybody. Here's Tamer right down in the front. So we got a new crew this year, Sean. I'm looking forward to the changes. Folks, Friday night, if you don't have tickets for tomorrow night, we're expecting a blockbuster. We have moved some things around. And we've got our 212 champs going to be taking the spotlight tomorrow night, Sean. Absolutely. The last thing we're going to hear is the new 212 champion on this stage for the very first time. Uh, Flash Lewis, as we all know, won the last seven. He has hung them up, at least for now. I think we got a uh, good suspicion he might be back on the stage next year in the Open, but for now, it's a vacated title. Well, all of this could be possible without our sponsors. We've got some great sponsors this year. The title sponsor being Trifecta, the presenting sponsor being Wings of Strength. Well, we appreciate their ongoing support here at the Olympia. Big shout out to David Becker, of course, and all our good friends at AMI for making this happen. Our Pro League president, Mr. Jim Mannion. Is Jim in the house? Jim Mannion, Tyler Mannion, Big Steve. I'm a big man, folks. Expo tomorrow on Friday. Heard big Mark Wahlberg is in the house. That's right. We got some superstars in the house, and literally, Sean, one of the biggest fans in the world when it comes to bodybuilding. And when I mean big, I mean big. Shaquille O'Neal, I told us here this weekend. A whole lot of guys. Mario Lopez, GSP from the UFC, Tito Ortiz, a lot of celebrities. We got all kinds of celebrities, and you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my good friend, the chef, is in the house. Where's the chef at? Big guns. Come on, let's see those arms, chef. What do you got? There he is. Chef Rush, folks, he's actually the official chef for the White House. Rob Wilkins, our good friend. Appreciate you coming down, Rob, as always, and seeing everybody here. All right, folks, so we're going to get right to things, and we're going to start things off with a banger, Sean, because like you mentioned earlier, a lot of changes this year. You guys are going to see those changes on this very stage tomorrow night, and of course, on the Saturday Night Finals as we crown a new Olympia champion. What I'd like to have right now are these beautiful ladies. Stand up, please. <laughs> the Katie Champs in the house. So normally we just got the guys out here, uh, which is nice and all, but we figured we'd change things up and get a little bit of prettiness to this panel. No offense to the guys. But, uh, but the reason I want to have you ladies stand up is we've got some huge changes for this weekend, and the biggest change is the prize money. So the women's divisions have now been substantially increased in the prize money. So we have the all-time biggest purse in Olympia history for you ladies this year. And I think they deserve it, folks. What do you think? All right, you can sit down. It's a long show. For the first time, Bob, ever, all the finalists will be on this stage. We had split it up before, but this will be the final place. That's right. For those that have been here at the Olympia in the past, you saw some finals over at the Expo stage. Once again, Dan Solomon and his crew have made some, some big changes for this weekend, and I think they're warranted. I think all the champs deserve to be right here on the Joe Weider stage, the grand stage. We know Joe's up there looking down on the snow, wishing us well, but all the champs deserve their time in this spotlight. And for the first time in Olympia history, folks, we will crown every champion in every division Right here. And it'll all be broadcast live on Friday and Saturday on digitalmuscle.com with uh, Muscle Farm and I heard sponsor that. All right, so that's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, we got some questions here. We got some champs in attendance. 
Speaking of champs, this young gentleman to my left, no stranger to the stage. Believe it or not, folks, we've got some stats coming to you here. This is next year's 20th Olympia. From Dexter's first time in the Olympic stage, 99, nobody is competing still. And actually, you can probably get into the 2000s, actually, before we got to find somebody that is still competing. So, Dexter beating Father Time himself, he's undefeated to this point. It's also, should you win this Olympia, Dex, not only would it be your second Olympia championship, as everybody knows you won in 2008, but it would also be your 30th victory. You already hold the all-time record for victories at 29. How sweet would it be for number 30 to be right here holding that sand out? I can't even put it in words, man. I'm bubbly. Well, let me, let me help you out here, Dex. Here, just kind of close your eyes for a second and listen to this. And new Olympia champion, Dexter, the play, Jackson! I'm gonna start crying like Ronnie. I was gonna say Ronnie talks you about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, it would be pretty amazing, man, to be honest with you. Um, and it's, it's weird because every single time that I've competed on the stage, it felt like the first time. You know what I'm saying? Just to be up on this prestigious stage, to be in Mr. Olympia with so many great champions, me being one of them, you know what I'm saying? It's just a dream come true. And for me to win a second time, I can't even put in words, man. Well, Dex, this year is very unique, obviously, much like the 212 in our open division. We have a title that's up for grabs. We don't have a defending champ. Now, I mean, in the past, we've done this many times on this stage, and I've always asked you, you know, what are your chances, Dex? How are you feeling against, you know, Phil Heath, who was the champ, for obviously, for, for seven years? And your answer is always the same. It's just, ah, look, come on, man. If Phil comes in, ah, it's over. Can't beat him. I'm, I'm going to do the best I can, obviously, after that. But he's not here this year. And the defending champ's not here this year, but you're here this year. So you seem like you have a little extra pep in your step these days. You seem like you're running pretty confident, Vex. Yeah, I'm walking a little faster, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is, you know, when I beat Jay Cutler in 2008, all the, you know, all the ducks had to fall in a row in order for me to put that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because Jay is best. I couldn't have beat Jay. I'm, I'm a realist about this whole thing. If Cutler would have came in at his best, I would not have beat you, Jay. We all know that. So that day, that night, I was the best, and I deserved to win. Jay came right back next year with my ass. So yeah. <laughs> proved you right. <laughs> hey, but I got that one on my mantle when I walk in the house for the rest of my life. And this year is it's wild. You know what I'm saying? And, um, there's no one that I fear. You know, I get messages all the time. Well. You know, these guys are huge and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, listen, all the dudes in this lineup, I've beaten a lot better guys than these dudes in my, in my career. <laughs> you, know, I mean, it's just, you know, I'm not being cocky. I mean, I'll be Ryan, I'll be Kevin, I'll be Flex, I'll be all these guys. Well, just, just to give a refresher, of course, Sean, who was on that Olympia stage with Dexter back in 1999? 99, uh, Dexter was there with Ronnie Coleman, Nashville Samadhi, Kevin Leproni, Chris Cremier, he's in the house. Chris is here. I'm, 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 we're all retired and you're still going you're like a vampire. I'm against some of the best guys. I have an amazing career and um, I've been very blessed to be able to continue to do what I love to do. You know what I'm saying? Give it back and, you know, always seeing you guys. You guys, without you guys, write me every day. You know, whether it's love or hate, thank you guys so much for all the messages you give to me because you guys are what keeps me going. There's been times you've been out Gav that I've wanted to retire. And I get messages from y'all, and man, it just lifts my spirits right up, and I just can't stop right now, even though I'm going nowhere. I start getting my behind, I keep losing the people I ain't got no business losing to, I gotta go. You know, but as long as my body's holding up, you know, I always say my face look 50, but his body look 25. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, thanks. One more question for you, Dex. So, hypothetically, should those words come out of my mouth on this stage Saturday night, and that saying I was in your hands, is that a good time to have him up? You go out on top as the champ, as the Olympia champion on the Joe Weider stage? Or are you still cashing checks? I love to compete. That would be very hard for me to do. Baby, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> 
Looks like Dexter's here to stay. <laughs> no, I can't do it. Give it up for the champ, Dexter Jackson. Rion Anslin. Going for number three. You're working with the real deal, Chris Cormier. Spent some time out in Arizona. How does it feel representing the Olympia title? Um, it feels great. Um, Chris is, you know, in my eyes, the best trainer around. Um, so detail oriented, and I'm just so happy to uh, bring that type of physique, improved guys to you guys this weekend, and thank you guys for your support and being such enthusiasts about classic physique and bodybuilding and, you know, women's uh, physique, bikini, and all the divisions. I love you guys, and I just want, and I, and I promise I'm gonna have this body sink to you guys this weekend. Absolutely, with all this hard work. Rian, you started out as a bodybuilder. What made you choose the classic division over the open body model? Well, I, I, I've always been a fan of uh, the classic lines anyway. And, you know, there's a lot of open guys that have classic lines. I just happened to, in my early, uh, early on in my career, it just happened to fall into place with, uh, you know, the classic division now. If I want to go to open body, it's going to take me a few years to put on some, uh, some nice, nice sides, some nice muscles. So uh, we'll see. We'll take care of business this weekend. Classic is alive and well. Um, I'm so happy to be the front runner and the champion of the Classic Division. I'm so blessed and so fortunate. And, um, and hopefully, you know, I represent Classic as you guys know it and as you guys love it. Um, and we will continue to do so this weekend. Ron right, Ansley. Well, speaking of Classic, we got uh, the guy next to you. He's got that Classic mustache working, Chris. I like that, man. It's, it's like right out of 76, man. <laughs> pretty. Is pretty this good to beat this guy? This year, well, that's for sure. Oh. Now, you had a whole lot of support last year, Chris. You had a great show. A lot of people arguably thought you could have actually won this title. So, we've got a great battle with these two guys in particular, and of course, the rest of the guys making up the class. But what makes this year different than last year, Chris, other than the mustache, of course? I mean, every year is a new year for everybody, you know. Not, not everybody knows my story, I'm sure, but I had a bit of a rough prep last year. And that goes to say that nobody ever has an easy, smooth prep. We put our bodies through a lot, and it's also very difficult. Uh, if you don't know my story, it's probably good, because I was crying all over the internet last year. But, I mean, this year, I've been so grateful to have an amazing team at my back. I've been healthy, my prep's gone smooth. It's just, it's been a completely different year and what I went through last year really kind of showed a new mental tenacity in me that I didn't think I had. And it's pulled out this year myself throughout this prep and it's just allowed me to push myself beyond limits I ever thought possible. And I really truly believe I bring a completely different package to the stage this year. Something I'm, I feel like I've been wanting to show to the world that I haven't had the opportunity to. So this year I'm really excited just to kind of show off a brand new look and bring something that's never been seen before. And well, Chris, uh, we're, we're going to treat this like a job interview right now. Okay, so you got we got Jim, you got Tyler, and you got Big Steve right down in the front row. So I want you to explain to them like you're going for the job, the title, why they should pick you as the winner. Yeah, why should you win? Other than the mustache. I don't think it's anything I can put into words right now. I think it's going to have to be something I'm going to show them Saturday morning, Saturday night. I think they're going to see what I bring to the stage and they'll know what, what, what are you going to show them, specifically? I'm going to show them a classic physique that's never been seen before. Woo! We're going to start showing you guys exactly what's going to shape the division years to come. Perfect line, symmetry, conditioning, everything you guys want to see low presence on the stage and just kind of, it's a young division we're in right now, so we're still kind of shaping the look of what we're looking for in classic. We've done a great job with Ruan, he's got an amazing physique, but I think it's time for something fresh up there, Chris. All right, Chris, come step. Check this out, guess what I got up here? Your weight? Big Rolly Winkler. All the way from Kuwait, tell us about the prep. We know you missed your peak at the Arnold back in March. You had a slight knee injury. 
I'm trying to rock the house. We saw pictures on Instagram and Facebook of you looking phenomenal. Where are we at today? First of all, I want to thank everybody who's coming in and today. Um, I want to thank you from last year to the, the people champ. I'm still happy with that. Uh, nobody can take off on me. Um, how is it going? Yeah, the prep go very well. I start earlier than normal. And it's good, 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 very good. Man of a few words, Roland Winkler. Sean, I've got the equivalent of the female Dexter Jackson up here, and that, of course, is Jenny Worth. Back on the Olympia stage. What's up, Jenny? Is it on? Of course it's on. Leave, leave no stone unturned here at the Olympia, Jenny. Microphone's for everybody. You were no stranger to the Olympia stage, but what was the last time, or what was the first time, I should say, you were on the Olympia stage, Jenny? So, my first Olympia was 1998 in Nice, France. And that's back when we had the rower as a, as a, um, around. So a lot of people don't remember that, that you had to see how many meters you could row in a minute. I'm sure Steve remembers one of those shows where I went flying off the back. We tried to bend, me and my coach Dodd tried to bend a seatbelt to hold me down. Because the taller girls did have an advantage, so it was not fair. But yeah, so I've been around that lot. So how many Olympians this for you, Jenny? Made your way really back to the Olympia Six this year with an impressive victory in Tampa. This is going to be my eighth Olympia. Yes. Well, Jenny, you're known for your innovative routines. Actually, I know a lot of you girls actually help each other with your routines. Getting ready for the competitions. You're very close-knit group. Our fitness girls always have been. Uh, so Jenny, what do you got planned in store for us this year? So this year I'm gonna be the what I was in Tampa a warrior. This routine is dedicated to my mom because she um, survived her life. So I dedicated this um, routine for her, and everything is just from my heart. And it's a warrior, and it's who I am, and it's what I represent. Is just to become a warrior in life, no matter what it throws at you. You just have to stay strong and never give up. Super Sean, speaking of Olympia champions, Miss Angelica, is that what you said? Yes. And Miss Gabby Alex from Brazil, hanging on to the title. How do you feel this weekend? Feeling great, feeling amazing, just so blessed to be here. And uh, you know, like defending my title, it's just like surreal. This is Every not time. your first time at the rodeo, so what did you do differently from last year to this year? your question, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and also thank the, the Olympia uh, promoters for bringing us all to, to this conference. We feel so special. And uh, so what I did different, thank you. What I did different, this prep I worked, uh, you know, I even did a post on Instagram saying the time I left the stage last year was in my mind already that I was going to work so hard for this year. And I took off the whole year in a purpose to, you know, to bring my best this year. And uh, it was the biggest break I ever had from the stage. And everybody knows me, I love competing, I love being on stage. So it was hard for me to step back the whole year. But it was great for my body. So once I started prepping, uh, I started a little earlier. I always did 12 weeks prep. I did 10 weeks prep before 14th. But for this one, 16 weeks out, I was already on. And uh, like I did many things different. I, I did a little more cardio, the diet. Me and my coach, Coach Kimoro, we played with the diet a little different, doing a little more couple cycling that we never did before and my body responded very, very well. I did more stretch, more physical therapy, everything, like every aspect that I could get better, I tried to get better, my posing. And we are looking forward to that physique this weekend, huh? Yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. All right, here with the champ herself, Shinny Grant, burst out of the scene.
just a few short years ago. He had a couple of physical hiccups that cut you out of the Olympia lineup, but of course, when you finally got to the Olympia stage, you made the most of it. Now you're sitting here as the defending reigning Olympia champion. And I qualified two years in a row for the O, but it was like three to four weeks out. Everything happened for a reason. And the third year was just epic. It was amazing. Well, Shanique, what do you think about being here on the main stage this year for the finals? Now, you got a taste of the expo stage. And listen, don't get me wrong, but the expo is a, a great expo. It's a great place to be. It's a big stage all in its own right. But there's something special about the Joe Weider stage. Wow, the expo stage is much smaller. It's a little loud in there. Um, when I heard that Women's Physique was going to be on the arena stage, it was like, oh, finally, we get the spot. And it's like a big, big, huge stage. You know, you get to see, um, you know, closer on the screens and everything. It's just a huge arena and more people, of course, and a huge crowd. And just when you when you go on stage and you hear such a big crowd, it just hypes you up more and it gets you more excited to just be on the stage and just do what you love. Well, you got some competition. And she's right next to you. Purposely put it there, of course. You got Natalia Abraham Coelho. <laughs> Second place in the Olympia. Now, you didn't start out with Mr. Zeke, did you? First of all, thank you everybody for all the support, for coming over it. But no, I saw the speaker, and then about four years later, I see to Mr. Zeke. Now, you weren't too convinced uh, when it was first brought up. Uh, for you to go to women's physique, were you? You were a little hesitant, you said, I'm not big enough, I don't think I can stand with those girls, it might be a mistake, but, you know, you decided to throw that cast in the water and, you know, kind of see what you'd come up with, and uh, you won your first show. Yes, um, I think a lot of people still nowadays have a wrong idea of what women's physique is supposed to look like, and that was my problem as figure. When I talked to Steve and to Sandy and all the judges, and they told me, you gotta step up or try, just see how it is. And I had that idea that I needed to add a lot of more size, and I wasn't very comfortable with that. I didn't know how I would look, you know, like there are a lot of things involved. With it. But I gave it a try, I didn't change anything in my trainings, in my diet. I just brought the package that I was bringing, and I'm like, let's see how it goes. So it proved to me and to everybody that it's not about size, you know, it's about um, the whole package. And it's not just what I thought it was. Now, we just talked uh, a few minutes before we started, and you said, I, I can't believe I'm here, actually. You're so excited to be here on this Olympia stage. Yes, um, I remember, uh, even though I'm still like 23, but I remember a long time ago, I was watching this show and I just see like how far we came. You know, not only, like in the beginning we only had bodybuilders, then we started having like classic physique and more and more, you know, like categories here. And now it's very important, it doesn't matter like if it was the first of, I don't know what year, but the first time that we had female athletes representing the sport in the Olympia. For me to be here is just an honor. And I'm a fan of this sport. Before being an athlete, this is like something that I'm very passionate about. So I'm honored to be here. All right, best of luck. Thank you, Natalia. All right, let's give a big warm welcome to the one, the military man, Cedric McMillan. Welcome back to the Olympia stage, Big Sam. <laughs> What's up? How y'all doing? Cedric, why did they call you the one? Okay, so early in my career uh, with bodybuilding, I think I was, it was one of my first shows and my confidence was sky high. And as I got better and grew more, my confidence got lower, right? And um, the guy that was my mentor at the time, he would tell me how much potential I have and how great I can be. And, uh, I, I can't see that, I don't see that, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm not this, I don't have that like this guy or that guy. He said, you know what, you remind me of Neo from The Matrix. He is the one that was supposed to come and change everything, but he didn't even realize it, you know? And, and, and that's what he told me and he kind of stuck with me because he said, one day 
He said, you know, the way you pose is so different from everybody. Your physique is so different. But one day, you're going to make everybody remember what bodybuilder used to be. And you're going to be that one. And that's what they told me. So I embraced it. Well, yeah. We've witnessed you win over in Italy, in Germany, Arnold Classic over in Ohio. Lou Ferrigno show out in Palm Springs. How you know all of that? I was there. I witnessed it. I fucking know everything. <laughs> and now you're here. Is this the one? Uh, okay, well, uh, look, it's a, it's a whole bunch of guys up here with a whole lot to say about whether this is the one for me to win or not, and they all are amazing, right? They're all great. Uh, one thing I can say is the road for me to get here, uh, we all have our obstacles and setbacks. You know, some of us got jobs and families to take care of and still trying to pursue this dream as well. Uh, none of our struggles are any different from, are, are any greater or less than the other, just different. Um, but I know for me, uh, coming from a couple of shows I did earlier in the year, felt like, okay, I got enough points, you know, to be able to make it into the Olympia. It's time for me to put my military uniform back on and, you know, work all summer. And as I'm watching these shows, man, I'm seeing these guys winning, and I'm seeing these points going up, and I'm saying, man, uh, I think I'm good because I'm tied at third with Luke, you know, and, and so I, I think I should be okay, you know, and, and uh, so I'm, you know, already dedicated to getting my military service done so that I can have the time off that I need to get ready for the Olympia. And that last show, who won, that's the one that show out there, I was in Tampa. And, up, and my damn name just, I said, oh, So I, 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 I don't even know, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And uh, one of my mentors, his name is Mike Cox, he said, oh, he said, Cedric, why don't you just explain your situation to him? You know, let him know what you got going on and, and see, you know, see what happens. It don't hurt to ask, you know? And the first thing that went through my mind was, what about all of the guys that legitimately earned their spot to the show? And the second thing that went through my mind was, what about all of the guys that were just like me that were, you know, one point or so out? And then the third thing that came to my mind was, man, I got to buy bread and toilet tissue for my kids. I can't be worried about nobody else's damn household. I got to make sure my people straight, you know? So um, that's what I put my focus on it. You know, so we put the request in, and it really meant a lot to me for uh, the officials and the heads of this sport and of the organization and this show alone to think that much of me to say, yeah, come on, you know, because I always consider myself this country boy from South Carolina, you know, nobody even know where I live. So for them to think that much of me to say, you know what, come on, you know, that, that was a really good feeling, you know, so I appreciated that. I think it's a testament to your service to the country. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. You know, I want to say before, before we leave, or uh, before I'm done, because I think I just got to go pee soon, but um, <laughs> we come here uh, to something like this and we're able to escape sometimes our personal struggles, the things that's going on out in the world, uh, we can look at what's going on, in, you know, politically, and, uh, you know, just, just fighting for no reason sometimes it seems like. And, you know, along with that, we can all be full of, in, you know, got this room full up, nobody don't give a damn what color the other one is. We don't care who, who each other pray to, or our sexual orientation, you know what I'm saying? We all can just come here and be able to celebrate the sport that we love. And us as athletes, you know, some of us, we come here, look, I'm ready, to, I'm gonna beat this dude, and that's what my focus is, to get this title. Um, but I hope that at some point, uh, we can come here and embrace uh, our diversity, and be able to showcase that diversity as we come together and celebrate what bodybuilding is to us. Uh, to me, that's the most important. So I come here to participate and try to do my best because I need a check, man. I got a youth program and I need to earn some money. You know, to try, I, I bought a bus with the money I wanted to earn. I bought a school bus. I, mean, what, I ain't no school bus driver. But anyway, I want to make this money, man. You know, but at the same time, this is a very beautiful thing that we are a part of. And we can fill that up with negative energy or we can turn it into something positive and make it beautiful. And that's what I want to try to bring to this whole thing. Thank you. Folks, immediately following the Sunday seminar will be a service with Cedric McMillan. If anybody can pull it off, it's said. Folks, we got Ryan Terry, Raymond Edmonds, and Brandon Hendricks in the cream of the crop of the Men's of Physique Division. All right, Ryan Terry. 
Time to sign, buddy. Am I going to follow that? You got to follow Cedric. I know it's not easy to do, but um, but I give you that task, my friend. But all right, you guys have been fighting it out for the last few years uh, together, pretty much in all these shows, especially the Olympia. Uh, Ryan, first of all, congratulations on getting back. Uh, the, the pride of the UK. Yeah, this is my, uh, my fifth time here at the Olympia, so yeah, thank you. I feel very honored to be here. Now, you had a, a, your good share of fans last year thinking that you could have been in the winner's circle very easily. A very hard fought battle. You guys always bring it, you guys are always in condition, always in shape. Uh, but you can see the intensity is huge up on stage. But you guys turn around, now I'm on stage with you. So I'm the only one that gets to see when you guys actually turn around, Big Steve says, face the curtain, John. That's when the real show starts. Because the amount of garbage that's talked and spewed was you guys, when you guys are turned around, is that the fact? Yeah, we like to talk a bit. We must have a uh, train that rally each other, throw each other off our game. Well, who's the biggest crap talker out there? Is it Brandon? Ooh, I don't know. Andre Figs has got a mouth. Yeah, Andre's, <laughs> Andre's up there. Andre's up there. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one there. Brandon, what are you saying, man? What, what happens when you guys turn around? What, what's, what's all that fireworks all about? You guys meeting some business. I don't know about all that, man. I'm just here to win the show. I'm just focused. I don't pay attention to none, none of that. You know, whatever you they tell You didn't even hear all this stuff he was talking about, you huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm all that. I'm just here for one job. I have one job to do. Um, first and foremost, I just want to thank God for waking me up every single day to be living my life and you know, living a dream. Thank you guys for supporting me. this amazing career, you know, bodybuilding, changing my life. So um, thank you guys for all the support. Just happy to be here. Thank you, Brent. All right, Raymond. You guys get that big spotlight right here on the Joe Weider stage this year. What do you think about that? This is amazing. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> this is great. It's a blessing. Um, yeah, this is what it's about. Prime time. It is prime time, my friend. It's also prime time to make some changes to the physique, to make some improvements. You got to show those judges what it's all about, what you got. Uh, all of you guys are obviously are very, very close when it comes to the points. Everybody sees the final point tally in the men's physique division. You can see it's literally a point or two amongst that top five. What changes have you made this year that could possibly get you in the winner's circle? Um, we're going to show them Saturday. <laughs> Saturday at the Expo and then the finals. So there's going to be a new champ right there. New champ. <laughs> Are you guaranteeing a new champ this weekend? That's what, I, that's what I trained for, you know. We all here, we trained to be first. Um, but, you know, I think I did what I needed to do. Improve from the close call of last year. And we'll make a change. Be a new champ. All right. Can you hear all the garbage that Ryan talks about you when you turn around? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong guy. <laughs> that's definitely not me. Nah, Ryan's, Ryan's too nice. He knows I'm kidding. Up. Sure, uh, so. I'm going to move from the one to the product show. Yeah. Brandon Curry. New Zealand, one over in Australia, one over in Ohio, and Brazil. It's one place you need to win, and it's right here. Is that happening this weekend? No, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for me. You know, it's been a long road, ups and downs, high expectations, but uh, I can see them on the top right now. And I ain't never been this close. So you know I'm definitely hungry to know. And I just want to thank all you guys for coming out and supporting this great sport. And just keeping this sport alive with your enthusiasm, participation. All the messages I've received, the motivation, I appreciate you guys. And I'm just ready to get this game started, man. I'm ready to get on stage. Brandon, you spent half the year in Kuwait, like Roly does, training for this one moment in time. Last time you won in Las Vegas was when you won the USA overall, correct? 2008. 2008, it's been a minute. Been a minute. 11 years. Is this what it all comes down to? It seems like it's wide open. We continue to use that word as wide open. This is one of those competitions where five or six guys can walk off with that title. You're in the conversation, finally. Tell us how that feels. Man, it's just a blessing, man. It's a blessing. It's wide open, they say. But I'm holding, I got that door handle on my hand, you know, it's, it's, my, it's my time right now. It's all about timing. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to close that door, but I don't see a better opportunity. I don't see a better weekend to have this happen. And it's all about now, man, and uh, I'm, I'm ready. 
couple of short weeks ago, we saw you crash in the gym. Were you trying to sabotage this day, this weekend? Your weights fell on top of you, or your head fell on top of the weights? What happened? Hey, uh, the video was just, was just a miraculous shit. They got the video. The Koi Bodyguard guys got it on tape. It was in the gym. <laughs> and I happened to be uh, doing some overhead pullovers, you know, normal stuff. But uh, I got the stack a little bit heavy, you know. So when the weight went up, uh, the weight went up to the top, got the machine off balance, and uh, here it comes. So, uh, you know, I didn't know how bad it really was until I saw it. Looked anyway, until I saw the video. There was a lot of noise, a lot of crashing, but uh, you know, through it all, I just really didn't get anything but a little bump and a little scratch. So uh, I'm just blessed that uh, it, it wasn't worse, and uh, it just kind of wakes you up to to the idea that you know, you know, any point in life things can change. Just because everything's going your way, it can completely go a different way. So make sure you focus on each and every day, and be grateful for what you have, and seize every opportunity that you have. And I just, it just really lit a fire on me that says, oh man, this is, ooh, I gotta see this moment. I got something, I got something I gotta, get, I gotta take care of. So it really uh, put me in the right mind perspective. And uh, let me know, nothing's promised. And uh, God's given me grace and, uh, and in my mercy. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Brandon, uh, we all saw that, we all saw that footage. Uh, and it was scary, that machine come toppling down on you. You know, God forbid you, you would have gotten hurt on that, but what you didn't see was the security footage that I got from Bobby Vodai, which clearly shows Julie Winkler walking away in the back with a ratchet set. <laughs> Just saying, uh, were, were you working on a piece of equipment that day, Ruli, or what was going on, buddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, Ruli. My brother would do that too. <laughs> He's got nothing. <laughs> well, I got a champ right up here, Whitley Jones. <laughs> Mrs. Jones, yes. you got a thing going on. <laughs> you got the championship going on, but you got defending Olympia champion. Yes, I <laughs> am incredibly excited, and I just have to say that being on the stage at the press conference is pretty amazing. So. Thank you for including us in this and seeing all the fans already. Um, you know, as an athlete rolling into Vegas, the buzz starts and it's just so fun and exciting. And then Thursday comes and it's just, it's everything just turns into the epic weekend starting. And to be included in this is pretty amazing. And of course, I'm ready, but I'm not. You've been a challenger for some years and obviously you finally got the title. Is it different training as the champion in defending that title than it's been in chasing for the title? Um, yes, I would say um, for me last year, being announced as the winner on this stage was such an unforgettable moment. And it's such an amazing feeling that you're like, I want that again. <laughs> so no joke, the very next day, um, I woke up Saturday morning and I started already writing my plans, my goals, everything that I wanted to accomplish to get to the stage this year. And every single day I had a goal and I was just checking them off and I'm here and I'm, I want that day again. Training, um, everything is amplified every year. I think as athletes, we constantly are trying to raise the bar. We gotta figure out how to, to come in better um, for fitness with our skills. It's like we've, we've gotta, We've got to raise the bar. We've got to come in with more degree of difficulty, more entertainment, more pop. Um, this year, I don't have a torn ACL, so I got my hops back and um, excited to bring that explosiveness again to the stage and bring in new routine, new energy, new everything. All right, healthy and ready to defend. Will yes. you go? All right, Bob from the Netherlands, William the Conqueror, the shortest guy in the Open Division. He's wearing the right hand, though. Raider Nation in the house. He won the Auto Classic in Ohio and Australia. And this is the one. You're Insta famous. We saw you on Instagram making a movie not too long ago. You had a little split from your trainer, and now you're here by yourself for the very first time. You said that was a good thing, right? I watched this Instagram go up 500,000 followers. So you're here by yourself this time. Tell us what the biggest difference is that you had to deal with coming here alone. You said you had a friend with you, but not with a coach. 
Nah, it's, um, I'm going to take uh, this opportunity to thank the people who brought me over here. And that's my sponsor, Ultimate Sport Nutrition. Go to the red. I want to thank the IBB Pro League as well. I want to thank the new promoters, you know. And I want to thank the fans, everybody who came to see us. And uh, to your question, I'm here with my friends. My dream is partner. <laughs> And uh, they look after me. So it's a lot different working with your friend than a coach per se. I'm here, so it must say something. You like what you saw in the mirror? I, I really like what I saw in the mirror. So. Is it enough to take these guys out? You've been here for a while. Yes, I, you know me. I'm not a talker, man. You know, I'm gonna show these guys tomorrow. Everyone who's saying that or not, we're gonna see tomorrow, man. What's gonna happen? Yeah. Tomorrow night, will you vote it? Tomorrow night. Let's find out. That's Saturday night. And a little few words. I want to be the first to welcome to America in his very first Olympia, Mr. Hadi Chupan from the Hill. Well, it's taken us a couple of years, but we finally got you here. Congratulations, son. Time to watch this guy. Well, howdy, it's been a long time coming. But you're here and you decided not to go into 212. But the open class, the big boys. And for me, the happiest moment was when I decided to be in the open class. And he says the reason why he chose the open class is because he wants to compete with the biggest and baddest that's out there and to be in the midst of these gentlemen is an honor. And he says he might be one of the men that, that didn't handle the weights as big as everyone else, but the reason why is because he wants to show the stage and show the people as well as the judges in the IFBB a beautiful physique that with lines and symmetry and also the size as well. And he's never been afraid to compete in any division. And I truly appreciate the opportunity to be here from the people, the fans, the competitors, as well as the IFBB and the judges. 
And as the only Iranian here, I truly thank all of you for this opportunity. Can you win? Me too, you win? He says, I hope that I can always come back and have this visa so that every year I can come from one Olympia to the next as the winner. For six years, I was part of the national team of Iran. From childhood, I was absolutely in love with the idea of being Mr. Olympia. And I would love to set the record from year to year. Can you win? Say that I can't do it, I have every hope that I will win. There you go. How did you do it? Thank you speak very much. From Iran to Texas, the King's Day. Steve, welcome back. From one shark tank to another shark tank. Very true. A little bit of a different feel for you, right? This is not TV, but it is lights, camera, and action. Very much so, man. Look at this crowd. It's amazing. Absolutely. We had a conversation yesterday about what a victory would be for you. You've been here a few times. Sixth, to be correct, right? This is my sixth. This is the sixth, which means what in the Kuklo household? It's, it's always an honor to grace the stage, being the biggest stage. It's our Super Bowl. Everybody's up here, you know, the, uh, all these competitors, and you can see the expansion of the sport, bringing the women up here, and, and it's awesome to be a part of this. Um, every one of these guys, I know, train their butts off and, and have them disappear on the other side of the world. We don't see them until the Olympia, but it's, it's awesome to be up here with them. But, uh, you know, this is like you, like you said, this is my sixth Olympia. Uh, Brandon made a comment about uh, having to close that door and try to win this. And I got to say, you know, I spent 10 years as a firefighter paramedic, and uh, I spent a lot of years kicking doors down. And it's time. <laughs> so Steve, your last victory was here in Las Vegas when you turned pro. Uh, I should say your last victory was Indiana. You won that a couple of times? Yes, the Indy Pro. <laughs> I remember you don't remember. Um, so you mentioned last night the victory for you was gonna be what? Getting that first call out. I think if I get in that first call out, I can prove that. Dream of many of these Olympians, Bob. Absolutely. I've ever Luke Sandow from the UK. They're not saying boo, they're saying loo. Uh, I do hope so. Well, yeah. <laughs> do, I need, do I need an interpreter look or are we good? Interpreter? What do you want to do? No, Nathan's not here. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Looks my body. Uh, yeah, but wow. I mean, I've never even been to Vegas. Um, every year I watch this, I stay up till like 2 in the morning and I watch this um, in my bed or in my lounge or in my dog or in the sun. So, um, and just, you know, just to be sat here is just, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm dreaming. My dream is real. You're not dreaming, my friend. Wow. Yeah, that's even better. So, is so there how many British people are here? Woo! I, I know there's some over there because I can see them. Come on. Nice. Well, Luke, uh, just a few weeks ago, you were actually battling it out with Dexter Jackson himself at the Tampa Pro. We'll see. You, you popped yourself in there to make sure you qualified. That's how important it was for you. You weren't going to rest on your points. You wanted to get out there. More importantly, you wanted to make a statement, and you did that after the pre judging There was a lot of people that actually had you ahead of Dexter at the Tampa. I did hear that. Did you hear that, Dexter? Dexter oh, was. He knows. 
I'm trying to keep it quiet, but I'm going with straight lines. <laughs> Thanks, were you worried about Luke when you saw the condition this guy showed up in the temple? Don't worry about everybody. <laughs> That, that's what. That's why I'm always at my best. I see guys backstage and I'm like, dang, everybody looks crazy to me. And I'm like, that's one thing. I'm, I'm really bad at judging guys. So everybody looks crazy to me. So that's what keeps me going and makes me want, make me want to come in the best I can be. Absolutely. You know, it was a real honor to have that come out with you. I mean, it's so surreal. In fact, one of the, the funniest little stories I have with him is um, when Phil, Phil Heath won his first Olympia in 2011, which I should know because it's the crux of the story. I was actually watching a play-by-play -play on Twitter as my son was being born. So, no one stops me watching the Olympia like now I'm here. <laughs> Luke. Yes. Can you win? Yes. Win it this year. That will win it next year. Luke's in. Derek Lunsford. So, uh, thank you guys for all coming out. And uh, let's hear it again, because last year it was real quiet when they, when they said my name. Yeah. Now they know. Now, now they know. So, like I said, thank you guys so much for coming out. And uh, I can sit here and I can tell you guys that everything just clicked with the prep, which it did. James Brown, my coach, who's been my coach from day one. Um, like I said, yeah, things just clicked this year, but I can sit here and tell you that I'm going to be the last man standing on stage, but really what I'm here to do is tell you guys my purpose, my real goal, and part of that is using this platform as the 212 title holder to fulfill my purpose. My purpose is to build camaraderie, inspire people to do what they're passionate about. Look. There's an open class, 212, classic, and there's men's physique. Not everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, and that's okay. That's why there's different divisions. But we're able to use fitness and bodybuilding to, as a platform to fulfill our purpose. And if I can inspire you guys to do what you're passionate about, whether it's in fitness, whether it's bodybuilding, or whether it's something else, whatever it is, just, guys, please just pursue what you're passionate about and do it wholeheartedly and there's always going to be obstacles there's always going to be times that you want to quit give in and just say screw it do something else that's easy but i can promise you if you just keep persevering and keep pushing towards your passion that it will pay off and look i'm just i'm 26 years old a few years ago i just got started bodybuilding right i started at the npc in 2015 a few years later i'm here this is my third olympia and I'm sitting next to guys I've been looking up to for, for many, many years. And like I said last year at the Olympia press conference, if this isn't the realest story of how your idols become your rivals, then I don't know what is. I never believed that, or I never, never thought that that was a possibility. But I am, I am clearly evident that, uh, or I, you know, I'm, I'm proof that that is possible. And. I'll finish off by saying this, is that just like myself, I know that there's many other young bodybuilders out there who aspire to be on the Olympia stage, just like I was looking up to Flex Lewis. And I know you guys can make it happen too, so just believe in yourself, keep pushing, and if you want it bad enough, you're gonna make it happen. All right, Big Derek. Bob, real quick, I got two more class of champions over here. To say he's so young, he's got time to wait. They can't wait that long. Camilo Alberti, Arnold Classic champion. He took the long road to get here. As, um, first of all, thanks for having me here, but I'm so happy to be a part of, um, actually, Mr. Olympia, the biggest stage, the best stage ever I've ever been. My career, maybe people that don't know me, but I've been, my first show was 94, and I'm 47 years old. And I'm still battling, and I made it at the end. Uh, I want to thank somebody, which is he's the man. He's really helped me and believed in me when I've told him my a little story. Mr. Jim Manning, thanks very much for helping me to get my pro card. And without him, I wouldn't ever be in this, in this moment. Because this is not just to 
means to me at all because I, I really from, come from Libya, which is North Africa. Now, believe me guys, they are watching us live. For all that trouble which is happening there, all that fights and problems and like war what's going on, they're trying to find the best spot to get to catch a net or the internet or whatever to watch you guys to watch the best show in the world ever and ever and ever. So it's for me as like I got my pro card last year, which is I won the Arnold Classic for my first pro show to compete at the Olympia to qualify me at the Olympia and I come third. This is something that I don't think it's happened or was going to happen again. For me, it's just, it's 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 unbelievable, and I can't even like swallow it. It's still like a dream. It's always a dream. So last year I didn't make it to the press conference. This year's the first year for me, and it's wow. Because of you guys, everybody's came here. I know there's a lot of people that travel from all over the world to watch the biggest show ever in the world to see what we bring in. I mean, all these champions here, they suffer a lot to make this day for you guys to see the best of the best. So we did work hard. Everybody else has worked hard. Hopefully, hopefully you're gonna have you're gonna see something that's very nice that's worth you ever spent that it's worth your time that you spent to come to Vegas to watch the show and um, all I want to thank the Mr. Olympia guys which is there in charge of Mr. Olympia for holding this show for keeping supporting this show which is we heard the good news actually today to put on the price money up a little bit which is that pushes us more and for anyone who wants to think about bodybuilding when I left my country in 1994, so I left my country in Libya and I went through around like different countries. When I left my country with 500 US dollars. And thank God because of bodybuilding and I worked really hard and I made it and I made it big and I'm so comfortable now. I've bought, I own like three gyms. I own my properties, I own that's all through bodybuilding. So if you make it right, you definitely, definitely the right way. All right, good luck. This is the last 212 champion over here, the Arnold Classic champion. Mod Astronauti, we're over in Australia. We just won this year's New York Pro Championships. You got one more to add to your resume. Is this going to be the weekend that it happens on this stage? Uh, first, uh, I would say. Hi for all of you guys. Thanks for yeah, to be in honor of us here. And wish for you to enjoy a great weekend this weekend. Uh, guys, uh, maybe you think all the athletes, they are working hard, they are tired from the workout, from the diet. But still there is some guys working hard better than us. Let's give big hand for all of judging and all of the staff working in this event and grow up. Because they are really working hard. I saw them maybe after 10 days they will travel to other side of this war, to uh, other competitions, then we back here at home, then we go other side to grow with the bodybuilding. Really, I love this community, and we are a great community, and we wish to grow this uh, sport, and uh, we are coming here, we are working hard, guys, just for you to enjoy this moment, and we are not coming here for fighting, all of us. All uh, of athletes stand on this stage is a champion. Like Bob Chick said, can you win? Hold on a second. But at the end of Friday night, there's going to be one champion. Yeah, on the stage, he will give only one person the first place. I'm just trying to get you going. Who's going to be? Who? 
did his best all of, of, all of this year and who will become with less uh, mistakes, he will get the title. So I wish I will get the title. He's <laughs> wishing for the title. I just want to really say about the, um, okay, we probably the top five they've been here. Last year from the top five, which is they haven't qualified, it doesn't mean they're not disrespect for these guys because all of them, they won the pro show, qualified to this stage. Maybe, like Ahmed said, that day last year, the winning point. But to be honest, could be one of us today, we could be kicked out. So anyone, from even the one from that haven't qualified last year, they could take it. So it's wide open. I know everybody wants that. And I'm really, and all our guys, which is I think 22, 23, they qualified. So every one of them is dangerous. 24 hours from now, Bob, right here on the stage. All right, thank you for that. I'm here with the points leader from this year. As everybody knows, we changed the standards for the Olympic qualifications for next year. But for this year, these guys, if you didn't actually win an outright show, you actually had to earn it by points. Lucas Ozzedo from the Czech Republic. Yes, I had to compete five times to get this uh, 20, 26 points. Uh, so it was much more difficult than last year when uh, I won the way to World Pro. Uh, but uh, this is my uh, fourth Olympia in the Open, so it means uh, just 16 more Olympias and I have the same like Dexter Jackson, so it feels great. Just 16 more? Just check it out. Just 16. It's good. <laughs> well, Lucas, congratulations this year. I know you competed in the WAP. You earned those points. You were the points leader. And you are here back at your fourth Olympia, like you mentioned. You might be the dark horse pick. For those who haven't seen Lucas, he gets an incredibly shredded shape. And that's going to go very well with the judges here at the Olympia. Uh, what are your goals this year in terms of placings? Can you take out some of these guys in the top five? Top five from the last year? It's, uh, it would be, of course, uh, each step higher would uh, be better of course so if I am top eight I can celebrate but top five is too high. Top eight is okay for me. <laughs> top eight's good. Right, I'm wrong with that. Top ten in the world is good. How many shows have you won, Lucas? I've won uh, three shows in Open, Phoenix, Vancouver and Dragon Class in Brazil. <laughs> And also my first 212 show, uh, Toronto Pro in 2012. So, but I don't count 212. I just count it. But it's too easy. Open, it's open. Well, Lucas, here's some news for you. Just 26 more victories, and you will tie Dexter Jackson for the all-time record. Just 26. It's maybe work for 10, 15, 20 years, maybe. <laughs> Lucas Oslo, folks. <laughs> Big Diesel in the house, Juan Morel. Juan's been waiting over here patiently. All right, I'll throw some pics this, this week, my brother, on the Instagram or, or one of your accounts. You're looking good, big man. Yeah, I worked really, really, really hard everybody else. I'm, I'm coming in really shredded. Woo! One thing I gotta say, I saw that. Yeah, that, that was an impressive picture you posted. Now, a lot, not a lot of the guys will post pictures in the last week, but you actually seem to take the opposite approach. You don't mind putting what you got out there. Um, you know what? I, I, I thought about it two weeks and I was like, maybe I should stop. But then I just kept getting better and better. And I was like, you know, I was taking pictures and like, oh my God, I gotta post this. So, you know, I couldn't hold you know, could you, you couldn't help yourself, could you, Juan? Just had to get it out there, Instagram. Yeah, I was pretty shocked. <laughs> well, that's good. I think you can shock yourself coming in the Olympia. That's a pretty good day. Yeah, right. Um, it's been a fun prep. Um, Dieted really, really hard like everybody else. Um, had a lot of support from my family, friends, and I'm very thankful for even my fans. I can't believe all the love, Instagram, DMs, all the support I'm getting from everybody. I just got to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming, but the support means so much to believe in me. And, um, never have I, 
I never really believed in myself until this year. I started to believe in myself, feel, feeling better, and you know, you guys have helped out a lot. You know, um, you know sending me the messages you guys sent me, and you know, telling me what you guys think my potential is, and you know, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, now well, Lucas says top eight to make his day. What's a win for one row? Look for me to get in that top five. I'll be there. That means you got to take a few guys out. I'm looking to be my best, and this will be my best. I've gotten bigger, harder, symmetrical aesthetic, and I feel that I've made all the improvements to be in that, you know, it's not about anybody. Like Dexter would say, when somebody's slipping, you know, I'm going to be on. <coughs> Got it, Big Diesel. All right, Bob, we're moving to our women's figure from the comeback kid, Miss Latoria Watts. I remember you won your pro card right here in Las Vegas, correct? I won my pro card in 2013 at the uh, NPC USA. Give us a little bit more of your resume um, after that. After that, I went on, two weeks later, I went to Tampa Pro. That same year, um, cracked the top four. After that, I kept going, staying in the top five. 2014, I went back to Tampa Pro and won that show. Went to my first Olympia in 2014, placed fifth. 2015, I won the New York Pro, um, and 2015, I won Olympia, 2016, I won Arnold, 2016, I won Arnold uh, Australia, 2016, I won Olympia, and then 2017 came around. Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody was there in 2017. Wow. No, just, uh, that just... It was a year that the streak, the streak ended, but the work was there, and I kind of really realized, wow, you can really overwork, you know? You really can put a lot of stress on your body, and it really is important to take that time off and pay attention to yourself. I had some medical issues that came about uh, way prior than that, back in 2008, but I feel like it kind of caught up to me, and I had to step back and be smart and uh, take care of myself, and this weekend will be two years that I have stepped on stage. And how is the prep coming back? Clearly you know what it takes. Yes, well I had to have surgery back in December um, and then slowly recover from there. And I took my time. I wasn't quite sure about this year's Olympia. And I didn't want that to be the mindset. I wanted to just come back healthy. I wanted to, to eat right. I wanted to just be 100%. It was all about self-care for me this year. And when I felt like back in April, May, I was like, I'm feeling really good. I think I want to do Olympia. And that's when I started really getting into gear and um, really pushing the, you know, pushing and, and training hard. And, and that's when I, I, I let them know, hey, I want to do Olympia this year. You want to do the Olympia or you want to win the Olympia? I want to do the Olympia, yes. And I want to bring my best and I want to show the world my best. All the support I've been getting from all the fans, it, and them wanting to see me. You know, get in your, it gets in your head when you're not on stage and you take that time off because you're feeling like, oh, maybe they don't really care. Maybe they don't, you know, care to see me anymore. But as soon as I got out there saying I was coming back, all the love and all the support, I just knew it was meant to be. And I want to come back and show my best. And I want to step next to my beautiful figure champ right here. I'm excited about you're that. You're getting nice now. We just saw you win last week. Sid Dillon. Phoenix Championships. Yes, my third pro win there, so I was really excited about that one. I love that show. It was all female judging piano plus Joe, which I love Jeff too. So it's just really cool to be around a whole bunch of women. Nothing but the women categories, and you just see it backstage. It's just a different energy when you walk in the building. So I love it. It was my first time. Jade Wood yeah. does amazing. Yeah. It's got the best staff. Yes, yeah, definitely a really, really good And winning time. feels good. How about coming up this weekend? I'm really excited about this weekend. I love the show. This is my um, sixth Olympia. This is the stage I've been on the most of all my shows. I've done over 20 IVB shows. I got my pro card back in 2012. Um, my first Olympia, I was 21 when I walked in here. And I turned 22 that same week. So my birthday's on Saturday, y'all. Yay! <laughs> um, yes, right, exactly. Got a long career you can follow Dexter. Really yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be the women version of Dexter one day. That's, that's my plan. <laughs> Hey, uh, Sydney, uh, Latoria's here to try to spoil your birthday on Saturday. There's no spoilage. It's a, right, right, exactly. It's just a 
blessing to have her back on stage because I saw what we were talking earlier. We're the people, there's nobody who we were we came in with still here. So that's the amazing thing to have her back on stage, have her backstage with me again, because we, we started this journey in a come up together. So you, you in meet Latoya, years. she completes you. Yeah, I know, I know. I guess I'm wrong. I have bigger sisters, eh? We're just we're twins. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna make my way right over here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey girls. Woo. I don't really have a question or anything, I just want to park myself right here. <laughs> we wanna Hi Laura Lee. How are you? How are you doing? Alright. Alright. Yes. We're gonna take this up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, my Janet? Bikini girls are just too nice. <laughs> Nothing to say. No, no garbage, no, no trash talk. Well, you know, we, we compete on the stage, not, you know, any other time around. So, you know, some may think, you know, we're gonna talk trash about each other, but, you know, it's, it's on the stage here that we're gonna show and we're gonna compete. Laura Lee? She's right. Um, I remember when we did the Sunday seminar, and you were like, we're gonna have girls going to um, the press conference because they'd be like, "Oh my God, I love your hair." <laughs> but um, what, do you, what do you think about Jada's hair? She has awesome hair. She knows. I tell her all the time, right? <laughs> She's lying. Because <laughs> really, she hates your hair, doesn't she? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it's very simple. I mean. Yeah, like she said, you know, there's uh, backstage we like try to have uh, keep up the camaraderie. But honestly, to be here a part of the press conference is um, and so much going on with women for the Olympia. It's a huge step for women with the increase of uh, prize money and that we're a part of this press conference and we can show um, you know everyone what we have and, and just kind of talk about and. Um, upbringing for the women, it's it's a good movement. Yeah, what do you think about the money increases here? It's good, and not only that, I've been, you know, to Asia, and I've seen what's going on in Brazil, and just all over the world for women, and it's growing. It's incredible, and it's very inspiring for us. It's a big motivating for us also to see the bikini category growing and just getting better and better. So I would like to thank uh, AMI, you know, Miss Olympia, I agree probably Mr. Jim Mannion for everything that he's doing for women this year. It's amazing. Very good. Thank you, ladies. What about your hair? Is that Lisa? Hi, guys. Um, I, I'm sorry I don't speak, you know, I, I speak a little English. But I want to say uh, I'm feeling so happy to be here. This is my third time, and you're, you're doing okay. I will help. I will translate for you. Okay. If you, if you need, Lisa, if you need help, I can translate. No, no, no. I got this. I got this. I speak bikini. <laughs> they said they don't like your nails. <laughs> They, they don't like it. They don't like it. I like it. <laughs> and they said that they don't like your hair either. But I like it. It's okay. <laughs> as long as the judges like it, right? The judges? Yeah, yeah. The judges like it. It's okay. It's perfect. <laughs> they said, they then said, you will not beat them on stage. <laughs> I don't know. You don't get that one, huh? Who's, are you going to win the Olympia? I want to, yeah. That translates very well. This is a dream for our athletes, and it might dream too. Very nice, thank you, Lisa. Did we get everyone? We got everybody, but we need some answers here, buddy. Really Wrigglers, stop playing Candy Crush on your phone, I see you. <laughs> the Beast is in the house. Brandon Curry is the favorite coming in. That's what all the critics say. 
That's all you see online. Brandon Curry, Brandon Curry, Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry's going to win the Olympia. If he's winning the Olympia, where are you placing? No, I was first. Ashley K. This old man did it. Ashley. Ashley. Oh, you, you forgot Ashley? I, I was waiting for you to I put you on the side for a reason. Sean, that's called fumbling the ball. Uh, oh, my God. That's good. Three time Olympia champion, Ashley K. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. We follow you on well, I follow you on Instagram. Do you? He follows you in general, trust me. <laughs> I know you do. You uh, hooked me up with the restaurant place up this That's place. That's right. Thank you. Mediterranean. Yes. That was, that was not by mistake. <laughs> Listen, Ashley, if you win this competition, you will stand alone as a four-time Bikini Olympia champion. I'm assuming that's why you're here. Well, you know, honestly, I'm here for the experience. And it's so exciting every time I come. It's like the first time I step on stage. So whether, you know, I get first or last, it's still a great experience and a great opportunity. First or last? What do you think about that, Bob? Yeah, yeah last isn't as good of an opportunity. Well, technically, I mean 16. I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, you know, I'm happy to be here. And it's been quite a journey to get me to this point, And I'm just grateful. So no matter what happens, I can't complain because I've had an incredible journey has given me so many great opportunities. Has it changed at all over the years? Uh, you're a three-time champ. Um, changed? Well, I guess so. I don't have as much pressure right now. Um, but I've learned a lot. I'm wiser, and I know what to expect, and I know how to handle things. Do you know how to handle these girls? I mean, they got some hair work in there. Well, you know, the key to that is you worry about yourself, because that's all you can control, and you don't worry about anybody else, and do your best. Famous words, there is no defense in bodybuilding. All right, get that name, get that, get that nice candy, you got it. Hold on, sir. All right, you've got a few minutes to digest it. So Brandon Curry is going to win the 2019 Olympia. You know, I'm happy that I'm not a guy. I, I like my phone, I brought on my phone. I think a lot of people is on the phone. But I'm not in the media, listen. Who gonna win? Of course, interview. Tell who gonna win. If if, we, if everybody do like that, why we don't take a ball court? So we can do the witch thing. I check who gonna win next year. That's easy. Dexter Jackson, I think, is the okay. The answer there. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna do that, man. but. Uh, Everybody work hard. I see brand new train every day. We train the same gym. And really, it is everybody talking about Brandon, Ruli, Brandon, Ruli. I see Brandon every day. We either don't talk about, hey, you see that? The tell me I got it. Hey, it's not. You focus, you want to win. You train, you eat, you sleep. You try to sleep on time. That you have to walk on, and we will see tomorrow we will win. Well, really, the people thought you should have won last year. People's champ got that belt. Right here on the stage for David Piper himself. Well, the judges think you're going to win this year. If the judge say that, nah, I don't hear the judge say that. I hear the man self, three time Mr. Olympia Jake Kittler say that. And, you know, a four time. And, um, you know how I feel when, when he say that because I remember when I got the car accident and I stopped like one year and a half and that year he be for the first time Mr. Olympia and I come back to the gym just to see how big people on the stage for Mr. Olympia is and I say Jay can I take my shirt off? I know I'm stupid but I just ask him so I know how far I have to do what I have to do to be like him. And now he's telling me I hear his interview from him. He think he got I gotta win. I really that motivation me more to win that show tomorrow. Thank you. All right, the last word. Go to the man himself, Dexter Jackson. All right, Dex, look behind you right here, my friend.
trophies of the champions on the base of this, and Dexter's is right there. Wow, it's got my name on the trophy on It's right, it's right there with the freaks, Dex. It does have your name in there, actually, so he's right. It's right there, champ, right within reach. Beautiful trophy, man. Will you be hanging out there on Saturday night? Oh, I believe so. Two-time Olympia champion, Dexter Jackson. 30th IFBB Pro victory, Dexter Jackson. Record holder, Dexter Jackson. I've worked very hard for this this year, man. You know, I got my training bike. Everybody know George had cancer. And um, he beat cancer, 100% cancer-free now. So he wasn't here last year. Where's George? George, make, making George. sure he dials me in 100%. He's been in my room about 10 times already since yesterday. George is up the feeder, kick Panthers ass. Good to have you back, George. Thanks, brother. I got my trainer, Charles Glass, back. You know, he's been kicking my behind this year. And um, I tell you, this is probably one of the best preps I've ever had. You know, no knees, you know, no, no knees hurting and all that stuff. So I've been able to really put the heavy boundaries on, got my legs back and everything. So um, we're ready to go, man. You know, so, you know, like I said before, not to take nothing from none of these guys, all these guys are great champions. You know, everybody deserves to be here. But, um, I mean, I've beaten everybody on the stage. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't see no reason why I can't do it tomorrow. Thanks, uh, obviously, everything you just mentioned is paramount. Also, your birthday is coming up, isn't it, sir? Next, next month, yeah. <laughs> Make it sound like it's this weekend or something. Uh, this week, next week. Gonna be 50 years old, Lex. Woo! Be 50. Yes. That's a happy story, folks. We're gonna see what happens. One thing is for sure, Dex, history will be made right here on this stage this weekend, folks. Tomorrow night, our 212 champion, perhaps one of these gentlemen right here, will stand right here center stage and earn the title of 212 Olympia champion. Saturday night, Dexter, or one of these gentlemen on this stage, will be crowned our 2019 Olympia champion. History made once again on the Joe Weider stage, folks. I want to thank my co-host, Sugar Sean Ray. Our press conference is officially kicks off the Olympia weekend, folks. We've got a great one in store for you. We've got an Olympia Legends booth at the Olympia. Brand new this year, folks. You've got many of your all-time greats that are going to be there, including Lee Haney himself, Severe Benu, all kinds of old champs. You see Dennis Wolf is in the house. Dennis, good to see you again. We've got all kinds of history making champs, folks. So make your way to that booth at the Olympia. And we've got lots of superstars in attendance as well. I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. I want to thank Jim Manning and the IFBB Pro League. Dan Solomon, of course, Tamer Alvini and the entire crew, David Pecker and AMI for all their help. Jake Wood, good to see you down in the front. Jake Wood of Wings of Strength. Our presenting sponsor for this year's Olympia. Folks, that's going to wrap things up tonight. Meet the Olympians, and we'll be right here in upstairs. You'll see all your favorite Olympians here. You can get yourself some signed memorabilia, some autographs, some merchandise. Everybody have a great weekend. I'm Bob Chicarolo. We'll see you.